हेलो फ्रेंड्स ग्रेट थिंग्स आर अचीव बाय ग्रेट टीम्स एंड ग्रेट टीम्स आर बिल्ड बाय लीडर्स विद हाई इमोशनल इंटेलिजेंस इफ यू विश टू बिकम दैट काइंड ऑफ अ लीडर यू नीड टू बी एबल टू कंट्रोल योर एंकर डील विद स्ट्रॉन्ग डिफरेंसेज ऑफ ओपिनियंस एंड टेक इम्पॉर्टेंट डिसीजन इन डिफिकल्ट सिचुएशंस इन अदर वर्ड्स बींग एबल टू मैनेज योर इमोशंस विथ इंटेलिजेंस इज अ सुपर पा which can be learnt with proper training so the next obvious question is how do i train myself to develop emotional intelligence and the answer is provided by patanjali in his famous yoga sutras although these were written a few thousand years ago they are as relevant today as they were then that's because the way we apply the universal laws in our lives surely keeps changing with time but the laws themselves are immutable now the first step in developing emotional intelligence is to develop an inclusive attitude towards other people patanjali beautifully explains this with the details in yoga sutra 1.33 which reads maitri karuna mudito pekshanam sukh dukh punya punya vishayanam bhavanat chitta prasadanam translated as lucidity or clarity that is prasadanam arises in the mind or chit by cultivating attitude of maitri that is friendship towards those who are happy or sukhi karuna or compassion towards those in distress or those in dukh mudita or joy towards those who are virtuous or punya and upeksha or equanimity towards those who are non virtuous or apunya now here the words mudita and upeksha do not have clear translations in the english language as with many sanskrit non translatables mudita actually means much more than just joy and can be loosely translated as being delightfully happy in the well being of others clearly it is the opposite of envy which we tend to feel when we see others prosper if you know anyone who radiates the attitude of mudita do share it with us in the comment section below similarly upeksha is loosely translated as equanimity which refers to harboring no aversion towards those we do not like and also no attachment to those we like easier said than done right therefore patanjali uses the word bhavnat that is cultivating such feelings whenever we go astray these values are certainly something that one works upon throughout their lives since seldom one is gifted with them and just like the pleasant receivings at the end of an auspicious work one gets the prasad or offerings in the form of pleasantness and lucidity of our inner self referred to as chitta prasadanam by patanjali now maitri karuna and mudita are obviously very good qualities to develop but upeksha upeksha may look to ideal or impractical on the surface however it is very useful in our lives if properly understood and actually forms the basis of emotional intelligence now the important thing to realize here is that as you rise in your career graph it becomes more and more difficult to segregate people and situations into just good or bad there can be people who are very repulsive but may actually turn to be useful in certain situations and there can be people who are otherwise very good and helpful but may unexpectedly turn against you in certain situations that's an undeniable fact of life and that's where inculcating upeksha helps which is harboring no aversion towards those we do not like and also no attachment towards those we like now although we may agree that these qualities or attitudes are important how do we actually go about developing them and here lies the beauty of patanjali yoga sutras it not only tells us about the goal but also gives us powerful tools and techniques to achieve it and the most powerful technique to control our emotions is to control our breath 
as stated by Patanjali in Yoga Sutra 1.34, which reads, Prachardhan Vidharana Bhyamava Pranasya, translated as forceful exhalation and controlled inhalation of breath also confers lucidity or clarity of the mind. Prachardhan means forceful exit and Vidharana refers to controlled inhalation of prana or of the breath which is the tool to bring about a pleasant and a clear state of mind. Now interestingly this same concept is captured in another famous verse from Hatha Pradipika which is an authoritative text on yoga and it reads Chale vate chalam chittam nishchale nishchalam bhavet now, although chit can be loosely translated as the mind, it actually refers to the much deeper seat of our awareness or the substratum where our thoughts come and go. In yoga philosophy, the concept of chit holds central importance and the state of our chit is a strong indicator of the quality of our emotional intelligence. Hence, a high level of emotional intelligence can be achieved by improving the state of our chit, which in turn can be done by controlling our breath as spoken about in the Yoga Sutra 1.34. So now, once you have understood and imbibed the importance of developing the four attitudes of Maitri, Karuna, Mudita and Upeksha as outlined in Yoga Sutra 1.33 and also developed some level of breath control as outlined in Yoga Sutra 1.34, the next step is to develop a practice of deep meditation. Now the deeper your meditation will be, the calmer your mind will be and the clearer your decision making process will be. Patanjali gives us a detailed account of many different stages of meditation and the journey starts with Yoga Sutra 1.35 which reads Vishaya Vati Va Pravattar Rutpanna Manasaha Sthiti Nibandhini translated as recurring thoughts that is focus on the subjects of the senses generates steadiness of the mind. Notice that the particle Va features in both the sutras occurring after the Yoga Sutra on Chitta Prasadhanam that is 1.33. This indicates different methods given to suit different times or circumstances or people in addition to cultivating the attitudes talked about in the Sutra 1.33. Now the Sutra 1.35 emphasizes that persistent thoughts directed towards the subjects of the five senses brings about a steadiness of the mind and needless to say that such subjects ought to be sattvic in nature. Now a simple way to start this meditative practice is to take say a piece of music that you like and listen to it intently to identify all the musical instruments played in it. Now if you do this a few times you will experience a state of deep relaxation which will lead to clarity and steadiness of the mind which will eventually develop a heightened state of emotional intelligence. Therefore, to summarize, the first step in developing emotional intelligence to always remember the four attributes of Maitri, Karuna, Mudita and Upeksha. And the next step is to practice breathing with forceful exhalations and controlled inhalations. And the third step is to practice meditation in which your thoughts are focused on a sense object. Please practice these three steps and share with us your experience in the comments below. In the next video, we will bring you more such gems from Patanjali Yoga Sutras which will help you in transforming your life and moving to the next level. Till then, stay connected.